Hi guys. Oh, it's a scorcher today in San Francisco. A scorcher. It's like 80. It's like 80 degrees. It's not that hot. It's hot as balls to me because we don't get a lot of heat here. But hi everybody. Adam Savage in my cave. And my cave is only a percentage of the area that I occupy in the course of doing my work. Does that make sense? Is that the right way to say it? In addition to the cave, we here at Tessit also have an office, which you have seen. It, uh, we've shot whole sequences in there. Uh, we've shot some wonderful builds of Jen Schachter in our makerspace. Sean Charlesworth used our 3D printing farm uh, for the, a lot of the Bethesda stuff. Uh, the Tessit offices, We've had them for uh, almost 10 years. Yeah, I think so. Um, and they have been a bit of, they, since COVID, they have gotten um, out of hand. So a couple of weeks ago, I took it on myself to, uh, to make all the decisions to get it into, into some semblance of order that we at Tested may use that space uh, to our best advantage. And it has been... It's so funny because I did not realize this. In here, in this space, I do big builds and I do little builds. And a lot of times the progression is I do little build, little build, little build, little build, then I do a big build. Then I do a little build, little build, little build, then a big build. It oscillates, but obviously there's more little ones than big ones. And this year has been so much travel that I really haven't done many big, by big, I mean like, multi-day or multi-week builds. And when I'm in the middle of a build, I've talked about this before, I get super in the zone. I get super obsessed with the build. I take pictures of it at the end of every day. I go home every night and I moon over the photos and I think about them and I think about the next steps and the progress and everything. And I realized that cleaning up the tested offices this last week is one of my big builds this year. That, uh, that I was going home and mooning over pictures of the offices. So now we have the space on the run. There's still a lot of work to do. The 3D printing farm and the camera room are in great shape. Great shape. The, the maker space is in need of some real love and uh, attention. And there's a last room, which we're going to use as a kind of foam booth private space at Tested uh, that requires some infrastructure. But... The next step in my evolution of getting the tested offices to a situation that, like I said, is useful to us at tested in the course of executing our really fun jobs. Um, hang on. Uh, so the next phase in this, well, you clicked on the title, so you know it's an architectural model. Um, when a space uh, when a space is important to me, when a space is important to me, I like to put it in my body. That's exactly how I phrase it. Uh, and that means that I internalize the totality of the space. I've done that a whole bunch in my life, actually. So like that's my storage space. That's uh, one of the floors of my house. That is, uh, oh yeah, that's an office that my, that my partner occupied and I built. Uh, that is the house I grew up in. I think I've got, oh yeah, 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 here we go. This is a, uh, that's a 148th model of this shop, of the whole build, of the whole big shop space here. Um, and this, where is it? Here we are. And this here, it's Tested's office. And I'm going to build an architectural model of it. A little bit bigger than this. Um, yeah, let me get this back. Hi. Here, here is the space. Now, I'd like to talk about my head's in that shadow there. Oh, so much better. Look at that. Presenting school. Um, I, 
I like my method for making a quick and dirty architectural drawing. By quick and dirty, I mean a couple of hours for a space. So what I do is I draw out a map of the space that is not to scale and I don't worry too much about it being in scale. So long as the major players are there and here they are, camera room, maker space, bathroom, printing farm, phone booth, uh, main space, Right, so here's all the main details. And then I actually pulled out my phone and I figured out the compass direction. And this is the tested office. So what I do when I do a drawing like this is I draw out all the major parts and then I go into the middle. I, I draw out what measurements I want, right? Like I wanna know the dimensions of this room this way and this way. And I draw the arrow and I draw an open bubble. And I basically draw bubbles and arrows across the whole thing and then then I go around the space and fill in the actual dimensions. The really nice thing about the open bubbles is they are spaces that I can see are filled or not filled. And if they are not filled, that's still a measurement I need. It doesn't mean that I get all my measurements on the first pass because I don't. There's only so much you can like remember when doing something like this. But I, I get most of them and then I really get uh, where I need to go from here. So. Uh, I have, uh, this weekend, I laid this drawing out in 125th scale, and you know what? I think that is a great size. I think this is the right size. I think this is very manageable. This is actual size. Yeah. I can, part of me wants to build this one and a half times bigger. So it's like this big. It might just be a little bit easier to talk about. I'm really going back and forth on this. We're going to go 1.5. It's a pain in the ass, but I think it's still right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's make sure it can fit on a piece of foam core. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, might not be 1.5. 14. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 14 and a half. 14 times 1.5 is 21 and it's 21. <laughs> 21 fits on this. We're going to do 1.5. Right. Um, so now I'm going to transfer this drawing to this piece of paper. Oh, and I think I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to suck it down somehow. All right, uh, time to make some 1.5. So now what I'm going to do is before I get started, I'm going to go through every single measurement here, which is in inches. Let me talk about how I got to 125th scale. I still got a minute before my phone call. Yeah. So uh, normally I would take measurements and these measurements are all in inches, right? So uh, 164 inches. Um, in the past, I have taken that number and divided it by 24 and came up with my 24th, in, 24th scale. One inch, 24 inches equals one inch. Um, but then I realized that there's 25.4 millimeters, give or take in an inch and or I'm actually it's exactly. Uh, and so all I need to do is turn this into millimeters and I'm in one twenty fifth scale, give or take. So now I'm going to go one, one and a half times that, uh, and that will be our real scale. What is one and a half times 25th scale? Well, twice is 12th scale, so half would be 18th scale, I guess. Um, all right, so we're just going to work our way through these numbers. 
with a magic marker and a calculator and increase them all by 1.5. So 180 times 1.5 is 270. 6.6. All right. <clears throat> I think that's done. All right, uh, so I have, I have my map. I have my map drawn to scale. I have my various uh, ceilings all cut out to the correct heights so I can work my way left to right through these ceilings, cutting these pieces to size. And uh, yeah, I should be able to assemble the model tested in a little bit. All right, let's see how far I can get. Uh, so this is right. I'm gonna say no. No. We are gonna start here. So the first ceilings are seven and three. know, I know that we are getting one here, yeah. so I don't know this right now. Good God, that's going to go all the way. That's fantastic. Oh, right, but now I can start to actually place windows. Yeah, okay, that's correct. <clears throat> am I, I am a great guy. So that's the first wall. First wall goes up like that. Great. This one goes here, but there are windows in the way. So let's go find the windows. I can move these for now. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> 44 inches wide, that is 66 uh, and then everything is 64 inches tall, so those are the two window walls, mm -hmm. those are the two windows, that's great. And now we can make these guys, which have doors. Let's go up to here. Closets, that's what I was doing. So, 42 by 11.
are moving gangbusters here. I'm very happy with how this is going. Um, here, doing the, uh, doing the 3D printing form now. And this is right. So that's the interior, and that goes to here. this piece right now. Can I tell you how relaxing I find this kind of construction? I find this to be one of the more supremely um, relaxifying activities I partake in in my life as a maker. I love building interior spaces uh, to a high fidelity. Right, and then this is the other turn. This comes back. Right, this is exactly the same size, so I'm just going to make these both identical. That will make it an easy turn. The reason I'm doing these walls is because these walls get covered by the ceiling of the loft, and the other walls do not. Uh, the other walls are part of the outside. Great. Lovely. 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 Good. Uh, so now... So, let's make some measurements here. There is a 42... Yep. 42. Door is 48. 48. All right, I have, um, we're doing really well. The layout of the space is just awesome. And I'm going to show you why this is super awesome in a little bit. But first, um, the building is held up by some large girders, and I'm going to build the girders and put them in the model. I'm going to do a quick and dirty girder model. Okay, so the girders are. Let's see what that looks like. And that'll be wide enough for all of them. So the girders are 15, yeah, and 132. Okay, so we do, um, right. We're going to do two strips at 15. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yep, yep, yep. That's correct. Two of those. Wait. Four of those. Okay, so I'm just going to cut those right now. Oh, whoops. That's 13 point two. All right, so how many of these do I need? I need one every 120. So there's an upright. One, 20, two, 40, three, 60, four, eight. Okay. So that is, I only need Third. 
So uh, I am making the little uh, girder plates that sit here, uh, and I needed 20 of them, and I just uh, scored them. And this is why styrene is one of the great materials of the world. So this is east and this is west. Okay, and we are doing a little bit of, we're just gonna go plink, 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 plink. plink, plink, plink. Okay, so. That all worked out kind of great. Okay, east and west. Okay. There it is. Okay, so. Come the girders. Uh, so, let's see here. This is the east girder, and it sits atop the. Oh, right. This is the. Right. This is the east girder. And it sits right there, like that. Yeah. So now I'm wondering, do I even need the ceiling on here? Actually, I kind of do. Yeah, so what I can do is I can um, put the ceiling for this thing. I realize I forgot one other thing. I'll get to that in just a sec. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Boostic. And then here is the other, and it actually stops right there. All right, so um, I'm going to make a trip over to the tested offices to install this on the conference table because there's nothing cooler. Seriously, there's nothing cooler than an architectural model of a space in the space that it is a model of.
Here we go. Oh, yeah! Look at that! It is the space! So, uh, this girder... There we go. That girder is that girder. I may let Joe and, Joey and Norm have some fun in here. Um, what I love to do is to take pictures of a space like this and then match them from a location, right? Like that. All right, uh, that's my architectural model of Tested. I am very pleased. There's still lots of work to do to get this place in order. Just for reference, our makerspace. Oh yeah, it needs a lot of love, uh, but that's fine. We'll get to that. Um, the architectural model is also one of the great discussion tools for discussing how to make changes and to do stuff. Um, the loft here lifts right out so you can see into the 3D printing 3D printing room and the phone booth. Um, it's just wonderful. I love these models. I can't recommend enough to you to make an architectural model of the space you live in and do it exactly the way I did. Draw out a rough map, don't worry about scale, just make sure you've got all the rooms and the corners that you need to allocate. Make bubbles where the measurements go so you can see where you don't have a measurement. Then build that. My recommendation is 125th scale. That is a very reasonable scale for corrugated cardboard and for foam core and even for styrene. And that just means take all your inch measurements and convert them to millimeters and you're done. That's 125th scale give or take. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time. Oh, the tested model is not done yet. It's not done yet because I've been baking something in the oven. Oh, what is that? What could that be? Oh, it's a T-Rex. But why? I'm glad you asked. The reason that I printed up a T-Rex is because that is a model of my T-Rex. I have a casting of Sue. She used to hang above my billiard table. She now hangs above my main shop table in, my, uh, in the shop. Uh, over at the shop, but no longer because Sue oh, has moved here into the offices. Look at her. Oh, she looks so great. I'm uh, I'm super psyched. Uh, and so here she is because you know it. You know it. She's uh, here. She is. Um, she's going into the model right into there. Okay, I'm gonna get her in and we'll take a little shot of that. That'll be fun. <laughs> All right. What? Look at that. All right, I'm going to do this. Ha, 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 ha.
There it is. Oh, I'm so happy about all this. It looks great. Thank you so much for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. If you'd like to help us on a deeper level even, head over to tested-store.com because we've got stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Our anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese. Follow the process, not the plan. It's not a process. It's not a problem to solve. It's a process to manage other aphorisms that have come from my mouth. Um, and we have just made a full set of our demerit badges in sticker form. So you can cover your toolbox with all of your screw-ups and celebrate it with other makers. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.